Hi, so in video 1108, we took this thing, which is a hand crank generator, and attached it to the Dynapod and turned the Dynapod into a generator. Now, I recommended this thing because, well, it's in a box, it's ready to go, and the whole point of the Dynapod is, it's easy. This, however, doesn't have anything different in here particularly than is in here. So the more adventurous I thought I would go through what's in here, what's in here, and how to turn one of these into one of these. Anyway, let's have a look at the inside of them. When we get the cover off and have a look inside, that's what we've got. What we've got is a turny handle bit going into a gearbox. Here we have a permanent magnet DC motor. The wires coming off the motor go into this circuit board here. That circuit board is all about voltage regulation. Now if you have a look inside a drill, to get the drill apart, you remove the screw in the chuck, unscrew the chuck, take the screws out of the body and we can remove the drill portion. If we look at that what we've got is a DC motor, DC motor, gearbox, gearbox, turn handle, turn handle. They're the same thing, the only thing missing at the moment is the voltage regulation circuit. Now you'll notice this motor is actually slightly larger than this motor. All DC permanent magnet motors can be generators by turning them. The issue isn't that, the issue is turning them fast enough when you're trying to hand crank them and that's the responsibility of the gearbox. Now in an electric drill the gearbox is called a sun and planet gearbox and let's have a look at when that. When we look inside that gearbox you'll see there are six little recesses at the bottom they take a ball bearing and that's for the clutch mechanism right there and then we have this three-pronged disc. That three-pronged disc has three metal gears on it that goes over that's called the ring, they're called the planets, and the centerpiece, which is called the sun, which in this case is on there. And if you flip that over again, it's three pronged, so that sits inside there again, and it has three gears on, and those three planet gears engage with the motor here. So we get a double planet gear set, really stepping it up. So let's put that gearbox box that gearbox back together. I finish this off really just by sticking a handle on it. It's a 10 mil a 10m nut put a bit of steel on it so I can turn the thing and connect it up to the meter. Now a lot of people tell me they can't read this meter. I've had a look, can't turn the backlight off, don't know how to dim it, so I've gone for the next best thing, Luke! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna crank it, Luke's gonna read the readings. 3.3 amps? No way! Yeah, it peaked at 3.4, 3.6 it peaked at. That is amazing, okay, so that's from that. Let's put it on volts and see what volts we get. Six volts. <laughs> Six point one volts. <laughs> so what is that? Three, six, 18 watts I could get from this by cranking it by hand. Wow. Now, the reason I recommend these things actually is because you find them all over the place. I mean, you'll get them in thrift stores, yard sales, junk shops, probably got one in the back of your garage right now. What happens with them is the batteries go and the motors and gears are just fine. So although this thing was pretty reasonable at 20 quid, this thing cost me nothing. Now there is one element still missing and of course that is voltage regulation. Demonstration it's got real power. I've got myself, uh, what have we got there? Uh, 7 by 4, 28 LEDs and we'll give that a crank. There you go. That is bright. <laughs> so while pondering the difference between this and this, I came across these. These are voltage control circuits. Anywhere between 3 and 30 volts goes in, up to 5 amps it can cope with and it will give a regulated voltage out. That regulated voltage is controlled apparently by a potentiometer on the actual circuit itself but it can be pretty much anything you want between 3 volts and 24 volts. That's awesome. The most awesome thing about these actually was they were a pound each. I, I find that incredible, okay? So this is 20 quid for this wonderful circuit. This was a pound and this was free. Let me give you a close up of these. So that little screw there is the bit that you twiddle to set the output voltage and it's stunningly difficult, isn't it? Here it's got out plus, out minus, in plus, in minus. So 
all we have to do is solder our wires to that. Now, it does have an effect. What it means is that you can only rotate the generator in one direction. If you rotate it in the other direction, you'll get nothing out. But that's exactly what happens with this one. And that's really the electronics. Your big old arrow telling you which way is in and out. I just love it, hey? Now, I bought what I thought was appropriate for this. Like I say, a few amps and uh, a range of voltage. And most of them are actually in that kind of price range, about a pound or two. But they have a huge range of amps that they can cope with. And I guess you buy the one to suit your needs. This one seemed to fit this little generator I was doing. Anyway, let's solder in some wires and see what we get. So once we've soldered that in, we can give it a good old turn. <laughs> there we go, a stabilized voltage of 5.2 volts, which I set by turning that little brass screw. Now these things come in all kinds of flavors. You can get them with little screw-in attachments instead of having to solder. You can get them with a multifunctional switch instead of having to twiddle that screw. And they're readily available, pretty cheap and easy to do. But the point of this is all of these generators are going to be the same. In fact, all generators are the same, but certainly the hand-cranked ones. And it's four parts. We've got a handle to turn it, obviously. Then we've got a gearbox to speed up our really slow turning. So neither of you are turning that quickly for the motor is really slow. Then we've got a DC motor, which is the generator, generator part of it. We put that straight into a voltage stabilization circuit and out comes our stabilized voltage output. You don't need to know how to build this circuit and what it does. You just need to know that if you put the positive and minus in on that side, set that properly and the positive and minus will come out that side nice and stable. In fact, all generators, irrespective of their size, consist of these four parts. Something to turn it. In this case, we've used a handle, but we've also used wind, water, legs, whatever it is, something to turn it some kind of gearbox that translates that slow turn to a faster turn, some kind of motor, in this case a DC motor, and some kind of stabilization. If you do this four bits, you will get a generator. But this cost me a pound, remember. Now I've got a voltage regulated generator, which I can get 18 watts out of for a pound. And here I have a voltage regulated stabilized generator that cost me 20 pounds. One pound, 20 pounds. One pound, 20 pounds. <laughs> I guess you make your choices. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.